Well, hello, good morning, and welcome to an episode of Camilla and I. If you're new here, I'm Mark Cooper, and we do local accessible wildlife photography on Camilla and I. But uh, yeah, just uh, very glad I wore the wellies this morning as we're here at Harnham Middle Street, a, uh, a nature reserve. A nature reserve literally only ooh, five minutes from my door by car, 15 minutes on the bicycle. Anyway, we're following on from last week's success we had with the SETI warbler. Ooh, lovely little bird, extremely rare. Check that one out if you haven't already. But we're here following up to see if we can get any of the other two warblers that we get around here the sedge warbler and the reed warbler. Anyway, quick flip you around, show you what I mean. Yeah, we're here. And uh, it's a lovely little spot. Unfortunately, it's very popular with dog walkers. So, uh, anyway, yeah, these are the uh, reed beds in front. But they have been decimated by the recent flooding and the amount of rain we've had recently. So uh, there is very little coverage there for the reed warblers. Quick, I'll get you in close. Yeah, normally, normally the platforms are clearly visible, but uh, as you can see, they're actually submerged under the water at the moment. Anyway, this should make the reed warblers and um, sedge warblers, if we're lucky, extremely visible. And uh, anyway, we've followed on. We've brought the Sigma 500mm again with the Sony A1 because of its uh, stealth capability and able to get in on the subject. But um, we're going to stand out a mile here. Yeah? Absolutely stand out a mile. Anyway, I'm just going to have a little scan round. And yeah, so if you come here, you you don't normally need the wellies, but uh, oh, yeah. Today, quick flip you around. Yeah, wellies are not only necessary. I think they're obligatory. Obligatory welly day. <laughs> Got the usual nest being built by a swan in this little uh, pond area here at uh, Harnham. Amazing. Yeah, just a little bit of nest building going on there. A couple of swans usually every year nest on the little island in the middle. Totally safe. Amazing. Well, there's normally, or oh, at least half a dozen pairs of warblers in this area. But so far, in a uh, 15 minute spell, I've only seen one. So, uh, yeah. And we've got uh, quite a lot of the area covered. But um, yes, I mean, they might even, they might even be fighting for the habitat. So, um, you never know if you get really lucky. Let me know if you get really lucky whether there's any scraps over the uh, actual habitat available. Because there really is not much to support the usual amount of warblers. Anyway, I'll catch you in a minute. Hope to get another sighting. So, a good opportunity to talk settings today. Well, I find the autofocus setting expand flexible spot absolutely invaluable in this particular environment. Um, you still need that individual spot to get through the reeds and then as the birds flit around 
you need the expand capability. So it's not the eye autofocus, the bird eye autofocus is still active. So if they come close enough, that will be activated as well. But uh, expand flexible spot, can't emphasize enough. Obviously we're wide open with the new Sigma F5.6. Um, and of course, we're still on auto ISO. I mean, in this environment, we could select an ISO. But again, they do vary from dark patches to light patches. So you've still got to switch your ISO. So if it's done for you, this is a distinct advantage. So we're still on auto ISO. 95% of the time we're on auto ISO. Absolutely amazing. Right, okay, so those are the settings. Those are the key settings. And I've just brought the monopod with me for video. So that uh, if I get one pose, I can actually place it on the monopod and just relatively hands-free and it creates a much steadier shot for you so uh, yeah anyway shh. something must turn up soon as usual as you know it's a waiting game on wildlife photography doesn't matter where you are you have to remain still and patient stay anywhere for 15 minutes here in the UK and something will turn up well this is either a very shrewd move coming here today or we're going to get absolutely nothing and the birds have gone somewhere else because this is looking pretty limited normally far more of the reed bed is obviously uncovered and the uh, reed and sedge warblers usually flit quite low to the uh, to the base of the reeds sometimes you can hardly see them at all and um, but if we do see them today they should be clearly visible anyway keep looking well we just had our first subject of the day in a female reed bunting absolutely beautiful um, it's just posing and preening ahead of us here and uh, yeah it's been beautiful yeah great little encounter to start the day and um, yeah I need to say it's flown off from this area now so it's sat there for about five minutes preening but uh, yeah good oh nice little start lovely and a tip is that uh, what you're looking for in still conditions like this where we haven't got much wind you're looking for low level twitches in the reeds and then if you're really lucky the warbler will work its way up the reed stem and uh, pose for you hopefully at the top we haven't had that yet but fingers crossed so yeah good tactic wait for the reeds to move and then pre-focus on that area and wait for the bird hopefully to lift into your environment nice well on reflection <laughs> my first warbler of the day might have been a jenny wren so uh, well, I couldn't see it to start off with, I must admit. But, um, yeah, I still actually have not recorded any warblers in this section. Have they been flooded off? I don't know. What are they like in your area? Anyway, the good news was I did actually manage to get a kingfisher on the other side of the bank. So, uh, yeah, just over here. The other side of the bank, a kingfisher turned up. I think it was a male. The male has the all black beak. The female, the uh, lower, lower part, lower mandeville, is um, orange. So uh, that's the way you tell them apart. Anyway, if I misdiagnosed the warbler, I might have misdiagnosed this. 
Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, first day out really for five days. I actually had a cold. The first cold, the first cold or decongesting I've had in about five years. So, uh, yeah, vitamin D, zinc, most people are deficient in vitamin D. So uh, make sure you keep those levels up. Uh, there's been a load of nonsense recently about the amount as well. Obviously I'm not a doctor, but you can take loads of vitamin D and still nowhere near toxify your body. So uh, yeah, just keep up the vitamin D. So uh, yeah, apologies if I sound a little bit groggy because um, yeah, this is literally the first real outing I've had in five days. So uh, a bit of a rarity on Camaro and I. Anyway, lovely to get the Kingfisher um, hunting around, taking up various spots, and I don't know how it's fishing in this torrent of a river. Absolutely amazing at the moment. River Nadder here flowing into uh, Salisbury. Incredible. Anyway, we'll keep hunting a little bit longer for these warblers, but no, I think um, they have been put off. Oh, just watch the uh, kingfisher fly off over the other side of the uh, Fishton Island there. So, uh, yeah, it's just uh, literally flown from the big oak tree there over Fishton Island. Incredible. So lovely this morning anyway, just great to be out. I mean, it's absolutely marvellous just being out on Camilla and I. And um, yeah, so having already got the settee warbler at uh, Landford Lakes, I'm not too worried not getting the warbler here. Needless to say, we have got it many times before with the 600mm F4 using uh, similar tactics. But this morning we're having a lot less arm make, I must admit, with the uh, lighter combination. The, uh, the lens, the 500mm Sigma lens with the Sony A1. So, uh, anyway, lovely little bit of the corn of the uh, reed bunting this morning, that was very nice. Nice to get a female reed bunting, normally always a male. The male's always posing, I don't know why. But uh, yeah, nice to get a female. And um, yeah, the little Jenny Wren. But I'm still looking for my first warbler of the day. And uh, well, sometimes this is wildlife, folks. You don't always get what you want. You know, if you've done any wildlife photography. Anyway, we'll keep going. And anything else, obviously, I'll put it at the end of this video. But if we don't get anything else, have a good one. Whatever you're doing, boy, from Camilla and I.